K98Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at advertise at k98talk.org. The leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98Talk and the Spark Radio Network. All right, folks, it's just a couple minutes past the hour here, right here in beautiful downtown Oklahoma City. You are listening to America Off the Rails. I'm Rick Robinson. We'll be right back with you here in just a couple minutes. we got to take a break to pay some bills, but I did want to let you know we do have Patrick Frenari joining us this evening. Uh, we're going to be talking debates, uh, the results for the happy hour debate so far, the upcoming debate this evening, who we thought, uh, who we thought and he thought shined and who else we may have um, in the upcoming debate here in just a little bit. But as of now, we do have to take a little bit of a break. We'll be right back here in just a couple minutes with the start of the show. In these these uncertain uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. They got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> We will keep this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan, period. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that. Oh, we'll come to the face. We'll come to the face of the new democracy. Don't expect just to admit a mistake. We're paying off election debts to those who will take. Attorney General's lying even while we're It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. You're listening to America Off the Rails with your host, Rick Robinson.
All right, folks. Well, it is... What day is it now? Thursday? Yeah, sorry. Every once in a while, I forget what day it is. Um, it is also the day of the great big debates. We've already had the happy hour debate. I also will be joined here in just a moment by Patrick Fernari. You you know him. You like him. He's been on the show a lot. I consider him a friend of the show at this point. Author of Commoner Sense. Also a, a pretty good columnist. Um, and we may uh, actually talk about a couple, of, a couple of his columns today, should we have time. We are going to be focusing for the first part of the show on the debates, talking about who may or may not have shined during the one that just finished, who we expect to uh, hear great things from, possibly, hopefully, in the primetime debate this evening. Um, but at this point, I, before we bring Patrick on, I do want to give a shout out to all of the affiliates as we try to do here every single day. Of course, there is our home network, the Spark Radio Network. There's K98 Talk. There is now SHR Media. There is Red State Talk Radio. There's High Point Radio. AMFM247.com, and the one that I'm still hoping we can close a deal with is WNJC1360 out of Philly, but we haven't closed on that one yet. I'm going to give him shout-outs anyway, just cuz. All right, so without further ado, here is Mr. Patrick Fernari. He's been with us before. Good evening, sir. How are you? I'm doing great, Rick. How are you doing this evening? If I were any busier, I wouldn't quite know what to do with myself. But this is the this is honestly the type of the time of the political. Uh, you know, pol- politics has a cycle. This is the part of the cycle that I like. The run up to see who's going to wind up taking the front and who's going to wind up trying to win the election to see who's going to be able to steer the country in which direction. So for me, this is one of my favorite times. Actually, is the run up to the the big political runoffs, and I know. I know, I know, people call me crazy because of that, but what can I say? I've always enjoyed politics. Heck, I graduated with like 27, 28, 29 social science credits. <laughs> That's, uh, what, what, can, what can I say? I was also a nerd. Well, I couldn't agree with you more, actually, um, particularly when it comes to this presidential election. I've, uh, as you well know, I've been operating off this premise that uh it's it's the uh, uh 17 republicans and the uh progressive movement slash media one entity uh uh, uh running against them uh, with hillary clinton uh, supporting hillary clinton and it's just has kind of blown my mind that she has remained such a big force in this campaign with all these quality Republicans that are running. And after watching that first debate tonight, I felt like maybe a little, you know, a little hopeful. Maybe the country was turning the corner. Maybe this nightmare called Barack Hussein Obama might eventually come to an end. Oh, from your lips to God's ears, brothers. (laughs) From your lips to God's ears. Um, (laughs) You know, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to sound like a pragmatist for a moment. I was really inspired by some of the stuff that the debate said, but I wonder how much of the country has honestly turned the corner at this point because of the fact that with everything that's come out with Hillary, all of the different scandals that have tried to take her out, all of the different things that she's done that were completely stupid while she was Secretary of State, and yet she is still the Democratic front runner. Can we completely blame the media for that or or the American public a, a little bit to blame there too? What do you think? No, I I agree with you. Uh, obviously, uh, her election would represent a third and probably fourth term of um, Obama. Uh, what I mean simply is that, yes, this political season has now started in earnest. It's official. We know who the candidates are. The first happy hour debate, is, is uh, everybody's been framing it, is under our belt. And I just felt like there was a little light at the end of the tunnel. I saw some uh, what I thought were good ideas, and I saw a couple of uh, those candidates that presented themselves as very professional, composed, and confident. And I don't know if the country has turned the corner, but certainly in the political cycle you're talking about, we have, we have a, a, a move forward. Oh, well, awesome. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah, I guess I, I didn't understand what you were trying to get at there. But now that you've reframed it, and I'm actually, I, I agree. Um, now, when you speak about, or what are your thoughts about the debate? Who stood out for you? Who were you wishing would just shut up and go away? Because I have a couple of those. Um, 
but overall, who do you think was the fr- uh, as far as for the happy hour debate so far? Who, who do you who do you think run uh, won it? Well, I knew who was going to be in the lineup, so I knew who I liked before the debate happened. And after the debate, I thought that I was really going to break some big news, Rick, and go on Twitter and tell everybody what a great job uh, Carly Fiorina did. Unfortunately, about a million people beat me to it. Um, And she did an excellent job. And there's somebody that I have a, a particular affection for because I liked the content of his speeches, and that's Bobby Jindal. So those two people... Um, I really liked in the debate. I don't think Jindal quite stood out like Carly, Carly Free Arena did. I think that she probably, out of the people that were there, if you want to say who who won or who did themselves the most good, I would have to say it was her. Yeah, I would have to say, um, I mean, I don't, I've, I've never met Carly. I actually had a chance to meet Jindal. We didn't talk for very long. I stood in line, took a picture with him. We talked for a couple minutes. And even just in that short setting, he seems like he's a really intelligent person, and he'd let me know a couple of ideas that he had should he get the nod, and a lot of those things were what he reiterated again this evening, and I I expected him to stand out more than he did. What I didn't expect, because, I mean, I'll be honest, I thought Carly and probably Jendel uh, should have been on that main stage more than a couple other folks that have made it up there just from their numbers. But what I didn't expect was for Carly to basically steal the show, and that's exactly what she did. She was on point. She was on fire. Anytime anybody asked her a question, she was right there with the answer. She didn't hesitate. She didn't hem and haw. She didn't um. She just flat out told it like it was. And we have a host here on K98 Talk, um, Stacy. On Twitter, she goes by Scott's Fire, but uh, Stacy Linux. And she uh, does a co-ho show with JD. They do it. Uh, it'll actually be on tonight at uh, nine Eastern. Uh, it's a uh, game on. But she's been a longtime supporter of Fiorina, and she kept saying over and over again, she deserves to be on the main stage. Well, I can tell you, after that performance this evening, I think Fox made a mistake by not putting her up there, because I think she could have beat Trump tonight. And one of the things that Stacy keeps pointing out is she basically is the anti-Trump. She's a CEO, so she's smart. Everybody knows she's smart. She's she's made good money, but she's not running around foaming at the mouth like the Tasmanian devil or like I like to call Trump now, the snarknado formerly known as Trump, because anytime he opens his mouth, it's to take a shot at somebody, and all he does is run around like a bull in a china shop, and I'm actually getting a little disappointed with it because it was fun at first. I have to admit it was entertaining. But now, several weeks in, I'm really tired of Trump treating a presidential election like it's a reality TV show. Well, there's there's a few things there, Rick. One is they had to come up with a formula, obviously, to debate this stuff. TV is limited uh, in that format as other media formats are, as how many people they could put on, et cetera. So Carly will progress to the bigger stage and people will fall away as things go on. Now, it's hard for me to compare her to Trump, and I think that since the other debate hasn't happened yet, we've been told a lot in the media what we should think about things. Obviously, uh, you and I have discussed this before, where we're like totally into it and buried into this stuff. And even we can get a myopic view of things sometimes. We absorb a lot of information. Um, as I said in one of the, uh, the mentions, I said in one of the columns that you, um, uh, about Trump, um, I don't think he's as much of the clown as he is the ringmaster. And he'll change the tone and tenor of this debate when he decides to, because he it does know how to manipulate and attract the media. Some of it is actually, I think, quite easy for him. Some of it is a little unpredictable, but it works for him in certain ways. And I think you'll see the attack lesson, and I think that he will, um, become, for lack of a better term, show himself to be um, more statesmanlike. But the, the, the thing is, is that you and I and many conservatives for many years have complained about the politicians. And we end up with Ben Carson, Donald Trump, and Carly Fiorina, who are not politicians, and now there's plenty plenty of people that are complaining about them. I tend to not look at Donald Trump or the non-politicians as the the problem. I tend to look at the 
the people that have been lifelong politicians is the problem with a few exceptions up there as far as the main debate goes. No, I mean, don't get me wrong. I tend to agree. I think, like I said, I, I liked the fact that Trump threw his hat in the ring. I have reservations about him, though, and we've talked about those before. I think what turned me off with Trump was in 2012 when all of a sudden he just decided to put the brakes on. He's like, oh, by the way, this was all basically just to get your attention for this new business idea I had over here. I'm just waiting for that other shoe to drop again because at this point I kind of get the impression that he stepped it up only because he had to. Um, and I don't know if he's if, if he has the intention on trying to take things all the way this time or not. One of the other things, and I wanted to ask you about this, that has me a little bit concerned is this rumor that's going around that one of the people that he consulted with before he decided to make the run this time was Bill Clinton. Do you think that helps or hurts him, in your opinion? I think it's a total non-factor, and here's why. Donald Trump, as a citizen slash celebrity, high-profile person, businessman, has evolved and matured politically over the years. I'm glad that his, what people call flip-flops, which I call an evolution, that, it, that it's turned into a more conservative outlook. I'm glad he evolved that way. I wish everybody would as they matured politically. As far as Bill and Hillary Clinton go, they want to be Donald Trump, but unfortunately they can't be because Donald Trump is a maker, and the Clintons are takers, and they can only steal so much without actually ending up in prison. So they're envious of him. He talks to everybody. He donates to everybody. He openly said, I think quite skillfully, avoiding any type of scandal, said that I, I donate to all kinds of people, and I have, and if I need their help later, they're there on the other end of the phone a couple of years later. He didn't try to dodge it. He didn't try to say I had, you know, these nefarious, really bad intentions. He just said that's the way the system works. I've been in it. I've been part of it, and it's not good. And now we have a lot of people running around saying that the problem with Trump is, is that he's honest, he speaks the truth, and he has a lot of support by people that are frustrated by the system. And when I hear a establishment pundit, or activists, Republican in particular, say that on TV or radio, they want me to take that as a negative. And, Rick, I don't take that as a negative. I don't think he'll be the nominee. I don't think he'll go all the way. But then again, on the other hand, if he did, I wouldn't be surprised. Conservatives aren't motivated by anger. They're motivated by principle. And now they are angry because the principle has not been projected and um, uh, executed by the establishment Republicans that we do have in office. Well, you bring up an interesting thing about the establishment Republicans that we have. Do you? I mean, because here, here's here's my fear: um, the Republicans that currently control the House and the Senate had the closest thing to a landslide we've had since the '90s. And they've done absolutely nothing with it. So I am honestly concerned that if we don't put up a candidate that everybody can get behind that we just we're not going to have a chance, a snowball's chance in Hades, to be quite honest. Because at this point, they've now had quite a while to even start trying to put all the promises that they ran on into fruition. And they've done absolutely nothing. And I think that is going to hurt us a lot more than it ever possibly could have helped us. And I don't know how to overcome that because at this point, one of the things that drives me drives me crazy about our political system is it seems like we have basically found the embodiment of Einstein's definition of insanity. We give one side a try. We wait for them to start doing the things that we don't like. Then we give the other side a try because they say, hey, vote for us and we'll fix it. See, there used to be this, this lag time where they would say, okay, they voted for us, so we need to give them a little bit of what they want, and then we'll just slap them with reality later. Now it just seems like it changes from one side to the other, and before you know it, they're, they're doing the same thing as the other side was doing. And I think that's going to hurt everybody as a whole at this point, except for the folks that are not actual politicians. And I think that's the reason why folks like uh, Trump, Carson, and Fiorina are, are resonant, resonating the way they do. I just I have to admit Trump's style puts a bad taste in my mouth. I I don't like the I don't like the showmanship. I don't like the arrogance because I'm the exact opposite. I, I it just it doesn't resonate with me. So that's my problem with Trump. Just to be honest. Well, I I understand.
I understand uh, how the messenger looks right now, but but you said a couple of things there. You're right about the Republican establishment and where we're at. Um, I listen to people on TV saying we're going to lose the country. One of the reasons is is the Republicans um, haven't performed. But let's just step back for a second, Rick, and look at the big picture. Let's look at this in real time where we're at right this second tonight. I have some favorite candidates in there, Walker, Cruz, a couple other ones. Okay. If I looked at everybody on paper, Rick Perry is probably the most qualified. Okay. But I watched him in the debate tonight. I'm not real impressed because of his delivery, Rick. So now we have Donald Trump, then Carson who attracts uh, the media. Carly will start to pick up some attention here. We always have people on television and radio saying, well, we can't get the conservative message out. We don't know how to do it. We, we're not like the Democrats. They're great at it. Social media, blah, blah, blah. It's very easy to be a liberal. You simply sign up to follow the tenets of the religion of liberalism. It's very difficult to be a conservative. You actually have to know how to think, how the construct of conservatism and the philosophy itself works and doesn't work and how it can be applied or where it might not work and then how it can be applied or adjusted. Okay. So those are two different people you're talking to, but step back for a second, Rick, tonight we have a chance for maybe people like Cruz and Walker to get their message out. Why? Because Donald Trump is bringing eyeballs to this big first debate and the media war that we have, as I always say, the one, one entity, the media combined with the progressive me- movement, now backing Hillary Clinton, basically, at least to this point, which is one big entity. We're fighting culture, the media, all kinds of stuff. So what we should do tonight, maybe, Rick, is just as conservatives count our blessings and say that the eyeballs are going to be turned to this debate, because if Donald Trump did not exist in this race, those eyeballs wouldn't be there, and we would have less of a chance of these other quality candidates getting the platform to put their message out for some people to introduce themselves to some voters. You know, you, you, you're bringing some pers- perspectives that maybe I hadn't thought of before. So that's one of the reasons why I like having you on. Um, so I, I have to admit, I hadn't actually, I mean, I, I thought about it in, in one respect, and we've talked about that before. I think because of Trump, <coughs> pardon me. Because of Trump's behavior, he's drawing a lot of fire from the media, so it's giving a lot of other folks that need some time to get their base built up and get their momentum going the time that they need. Because he's the one drawing all the fire. I hadn't thought about it from your perspective, though, where because of the fact that he's drawn all the fire and he's gotten all this attention, and not only does he feed off the attention, everything that anybody thinks is going to destroy him, he winds up turning into a positive and his numbers get even bigger. I hadn't really thought about the fact that basically that's going to get some people watching this debate that might not have watched it otherwise, and they may actually see, even if it's still with him, they may see something that they didn't expect. That's a, that's an interesting twist there, sir. Well, there's, there's another advantage to this, if you will, also. And here's what it is. You and I, as conservatives, and everybody that follows the same kind of construct that we do, have been complaining for, I would assume, at least decades now about the status quo. That includes the establishment Republicans. The rejection of the Tea Party in 2010 by the establishment Republicans was the biggest political mistake in the last 50 years because politics is momentum. And the establishment Republicans did not latch on to that momentum. So we got more status quo, more anger, more dysfunction in Washington. Donald Trump's entrance into the race has done something very, very uh, uh, extraordinary. He has exposed many people, whether they be conservative, conservative pundits on TV and radio, celebrities, or other politicians, or people that work for campaigns and et cetera. He has exposed their true colors. You have seen more truth in the American political arena in the last six weeks, Rick, than you've seen in the last 30 years. No, I would agree with that. 
Um, I think you're absolutely right. And I think part of that is because Trump, and he, he said it himself. Actually, it was one of the things they talked about on this last Saturday's cashing in. Trump basically admits, I don't need special interest groups. I'm not bold in anybody. I'm just going to tell you exactly what I think. But that's honestly one of the things that I started to like about Fiorina. Because like I said, um, Trump's Tasmanian approach, or Tasmanian devil approach to politics just doesn't work with me. Um, but what I do like is she's doing much the same thing that he's doing, but she's doing it in a way that doesn't make people like me look at her like she's crazy. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, and and I'll, I'll give you a chance to say something about it in a second you, because we'd already kind of touched on it. I honestly think she was the clear winner uh, of the debate so far. I don't know um, what's going to happen since it's basically this was the 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 lower card so to speak and the main event still up upcoming but i have to admit with everybody that was on there even with my preconceived ideas of who i really wanted to see do well and much like you i am a fan of jendal um and i like his ideas and in theory i i like um governor perry and on paper like you said he's one of the most qualified people that are currently trying to run I just don't think he articulates things very well, and I think one of the things that's going to kill him is if you close your eyes and you listen, he sounds like Bush. It freaked me out, especially when he mispronounced nuclear, because I had been, I happened to have been blinking during that, sec that second that he said that, and I'm like, oh my god, it's Bush again. I know it's just because he's from Texas, but I, I, it, it doesn't work. All right, we actually seem well, to have a caller coming in. I, since I have you on an open line, this is a line folks can call in on, so I'm going to go ahead and bring him over. Okay. Uh, all right, we don't usually take callers when I have an interview, but the me? line's open. Uh, I'm on the air, sir. So are you. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm on the air, and so are you. Hold on. Really? Okay, so I'm guessing it's not a caller. I think we're being pranked, Patrick. Okay. Well, there's always room for a little uh, levity as far as I'm concerned, Rick. All right. So anyway, caller, if you can hear me, I'm not able to hear you. You might want to try giving us a call back. The line is technically open since Patrick has to be called in on the line that has a phone attached to it. But I don't normally take callers during interviews, but you're more than welcome to try again. All right, so, color gone. <laughs> All right. Fun times, fun times. All right, so anyway, where were we before we got pranked? <laughs> I'm talking about uh, Carly Fiorina and Jindal and the personalities, Rick Perry, uh, Rick Perry's demeanor, etc. You know, the one that I, I really just wanted to keep saying over and over again, I really wish he would just shut up and go away. And I feel bad about still feeling that way, especially after he gave a little bit of his life story there at the end. I just really wanted Graham to just go away. Am I the only one that felt that way? I mean, am I, like, really just an evil conservative after all? <laughs> no, I think that the, uh, the we talked to, mentioned before about uh, circulating a... Uh, get rid of a uh, uh, John McCain and Graham, Graham uh, petition, I think, would be a lot better than asking Trump or anybody else to drop out of the race right now. And I, I know that style matters. It, it's a hybrid for a candidate. I mean, if you listen to, um, uh, which I do sometimes, uh, uh, various Ronald Reagan speeches, there's about 10 or 12 speeches where his delivery is very good, but the content of his speech, the meat of it, is really excellent. In very straightforward, simple words, he gets the idea of America across it. It's just a pleasure to listen to. And not many candidates can do that. They're either the steak or the sizzle. Jindal has a lot of steak, very little sizzle. Maybe Trump is more sizzle than steak. Obviously, at this point, he is. So we'll see how things shake out. I think that Carly probably hits the middle of the road there where she has a good delivery and she's talking about good solid conservative <laughs> ideas all right i think we st I, I tried to get rid of the caller but i think he's still here can you hear me caller can you hear me denny yes this is denny this is denny i'm back sorry about this guys you know when does 10 decide to come onto my screen before i got on with y'all and i apologize about that all right so what what, what have you got for us denny well think about it like this when it comes to uh Trump, for instance, 
Trump is more of the Reaganistic style. Let me explain why. Reagan was never a U.S. senator, nor was he a congressman. He was just a governor of California twice. He was ultra conservative. So what they're likening this to is Trump being a Reagan s against Hillary Clinton and, of course, the most ultra liberal President Obama. And that's what they're talking about off and on, which I see that to be so, too. He's using his, you know, think about it. He started off with the movie, uh, what, Home Alone 2. Then he was, he had his show on NBC. And so he he is following the Reagan, the Reagan line of thinking. He, you know, he is against, just as Reagan was, um, oh, what was that, those, uh, the kind of union, uh, the worker union, not not the general workers union, but certain kinds. He's against that just like Reagan was. And it's getting really interesting. That's why tonight, I think, and uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see at about 8 o'clock what they're going to really discuss. All right. So, Patrick, since uh, we've never taken a caller with you here before, I'll give you the chance to talk to him. What, what do you have to say about what he said? <laughs> well, it's um, uh, in my book, Commoner Sense, I talk about this a little bit. Um, even FDR was against um, federal unions for federal employees. And he laid out very clearly where this would end up. And um, as I point out in the book, this is the guy that wanted to redo the Bill of Rights. I mean, you know, not too much ego there. Um, he, he was not a conservative by any stretch of the imagination, but he knew over time the disastrous effects of national federalized union workers, the power that they would eventually yield and the money that they would cost. There's uh, uh, Private unions are a whole different thing, especially if you look at it regionally, which is a whole other talk show about where they work and where they don't and why culturally, historically, that's a whole other show. But I think what Denny's probably talking about is the federal workers in those unions. And there is nobody that can say that this has not been a disaster. Not all workers are bad. Not all bureaucrats are bad. But the unionizing of them is a terrible idea. That's exactly right. That's exactly what I'm talking about. All right. A anything else, caller? Because we're about to t have to take a break. Yep. Well, I uh, appreciate you all doing the show tonight. You know, it's going to be interesting to see again, as you know, they said on the pre on the uh, what do they call the the afternoon blitz with the uh, the ones who didn't make it to tonight's thing that. Um, oh, what is her name? I'm sorry. It escapes me. But she was the one that really did the best. Yeah. Fiorina. We've been. We've yeah. Fiorina. That's right. She she was the one that, you know, and unfortunately, the Louisiana governor didn't exactly rise up to where she did in that debate. So. All right. Well, anyway. thanks for calling in. Um, feel free Appreciate to do so in the future. <laughs> well, we thank you all for doing the show, and we hope to hear more of you. All right. Have a good night. All right. Well, at that point, we have passed the halfway mark of the show. We're going to have to take a really quick break. We'll be back here in just a couple of minutes. We'll continue with the debate talk and then probably touch on Patrick's column, the uh, the recent one that he did called Entitled President Trump with a ginormous question mark afterwards. We'll talk about that and much more when we come right back here in just a couple seconds. Maybe. Where is it? Red Nation Rising brings you Town Hall Radio. From a single tweet to three million a month, our community is a force to be reckoned with on social media. So don't miss our show Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern on K98 Talk. Our chat room is our co-host and you ask the question. Join us and be heard. So get ready to sound off on Red Nation Rising Radio. No one else is going to do it for you. Is it In 
these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on K98talk.com. We will never fully understand what we've asked of our military service members, of their families or their children, asking them to deploy, patrol, stay on watch, on point, asking them to put themselves in harm's way, to endure it all. But we do understand that it's our turn, our duty, to bring them all the way home, to keep them secure, to have their backs for the rest of their lives. Wounded Warrior Project long-term support programs do whatever it takes to help our most severely ill or injured veterans live independently at no cost for life so that they might stand at ease. Find out how you can help at findwwp.org. This is JD. And this is Stacy. Join us Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, for Game On. Remember, lock up the children and the old folks. Game On, the home of living conservative through conservative. Where no one is safe and no one is spared, not even the hosts. Oh, like that was supposed to be a spin, spin cycle. cycle. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. We love you anyway. Right round, baby. Self monitoring right Ebola anyway. radio strikes again. <laughs> anyway. Anybody uh, see the host monkey? Today. Where's the host monkey? Where's the host monkey? For God's sake, I need an antidote. Just anyway, do your rant. Let's pop out of the second. <laughs> Find us on Twitter at JD and Stacy. You're listening to K98talk.com. All right, folks, we're back. We're live. This is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson. For those of you listening live, we may have been having a technical difficulty issue there for just a minute, but I think we've got things at least somewhat back under control. I saw a couple of folks hanging out in the chat room, um, hoping maybe they can tell me whether or not we still have audio. But as of right now, I still show we have audio. We have a connection, and my levelers are moving, so I'm going to continue as if everything is fine. So we are back and joined by Mr. Patrick Fernari, author of Commoner Sense, right here on America Off the Rails. Um, now, did you have anything else you wanted to touch on about the debates before we change topics for about the last 20 minutes? Um, no, just that uh, I'm really looking forward to them, and um, I just I, I'm I'm hopeful that the Republicans can get their message out, and um, uh, you know of course hope that we end up with a uh, conservative in there and a you know Republican president, House and Senate. Okay, so I guess. That's odd because I can't hear it at all, but I have somebody who's listening who just messaged me and said not only can they hear me talking, they can hear the – the because remember I had the, the player in the chat room open to see if I can hear the sounds and I couldn't. Well, I guess they could hear everything just fine because the person that just messaged me said they could not only hear me talking, but they heard the echo from the playback. So I guess it's just on my side. So anyway, um, now before – I guess one last question because I, I – I know, I know you've, uh, we've talked uh, a lot about the first debate, and that's where we spent most of our time. Do you expect to see anybody stand out tonight other than Trump, or are you thinking that he's going to steal the show? Because I'm just kind of wondering. 
I don't think that's going to happen. If you think about it, um, from Trump's perspective, the smart thing would be to basically adopt the positions of his rivals. Uh, I want a small government. I want the government to get out of the people's way. I want less bureaucracy. I want a flat tax. I want a fair tax, whatever it may be. I heard something mentioned today about he might have a, a possible uh, flat tax proposal. People have said he's short on details, and I will tell you why. He plays things very close to the chest. He does not like to give his rivals his ideas and have them recirculate as ammo towards him or basically um, uh, something that will bolster their campaign. So he knows how to do this. His, uh, uh, his bombastic approach, the thing that you say is a little off-putting to you, is something that it, it's kind of a fair comparison. It's not really that accurate. Uh, a little bit like Teddy Roosevelt, and then we hear these other comparisons to Ross Perot, which are not accurate at all. This is a different time. Trump has national recognition, big media footprint, so he will stand out. But more than anything, if the time is kept fairly even between these people, all those quality candidates are going to get heard. He just has to survive this, and he knows it. So I don't think that this buildup by the media and even by Fox to a certain degree, I don't think it's going to quite come off as people think it is unless there's some you know big, huge moment they can latch on to and say, see, we told you it was worth watching. And don't be surprised if they kind of um, – Create that or hype it, even if it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, good, good points all the way around. I just, I'm curious to see what happens uh, with Trump. I'm curious to see if anybody else can uh, snag the spotlight from him, so to speak. I think so far, and I, I don't know, we, they may have actually done Fiorina a service by putting her on the smaller stage first. Because she managed to garner all the attention. I don't know, as much as I think in ideas and being able to articulate them well with, again, not sounding like the Tasmanian Devil or the Snark NATO, um, I think um, toe-to-toe with Trump on the on the big stage right now, I'm, I'm not sure she would have shown out quite as well as she did. So they may have actually helped her more than they've hurt her, as much as it pains me to say that, because I've always felt like she deserved to be on the big stage. But um, we will actually be taking the focus now here more towards Trump. You have recently written an article for the Magic City Morning Star. Of course, you are a guest columnist there. Uh, Dateline, July 29, 2015. 449 in the morning? Do you ever sleep, sir? People ask me that all the time. So I just, I just... <laughs> Well, I'm not, sure if those, I'm not sure if those time stats are accurate, but they might be. <laughs> I uh, I think about all this stuff all the time, and uh, my point one of the, the one one thing about Trump is he's a good student. He will become more of a politician naturally from being in this arena. That's what good competitors do. But don't but don't forget, Rick, that your complaint, and my complaint, many conservatives' complaint is about the status quo politicians, these lifers that have been in there, the people that are beholden to lobbyists, all those things. I really don't think that Donald Trump needed this nonsense in his life. I think he would have been just fine without running for president. And as far as him going up to the line before or backing down, I think that if you're going to really be serious about it and you're really going to make the decision, whatever point you may be in your life or in, in his case, his business life and personal life, I think that that just showed he actually was making a serious decision. He's had these politicians knocking his doors down for 30 years asking for support and asking for money. And at some point, he just said, screw it. I'm going to run. I can do better than these guys. I agree with you. His style is not the best. Donald Trump is not the most conservative candidate out of these 10 that we have tonight. But I think as a leader, he actually as president might, and that's a big might, might have the chance to move us more towards conservatism. If you put Ted Cruz in there, Heck, his own party hates him. If you put Trump in, I'm telling you, he'll flip on a dime. He'll be talking establishment people into all kinds of stuff. Ted Cruz isn't going to be able to do that, even though I would love to see a Cruz-Walker ticket. 
Um, we have a long ways to go, Rick. That's why I put President Trump question mark in the column. Um, in my book, Commoner Sense, I think that I was looking for a potential candidate kind of like Trump, maybe not in the embodiment, embodiment of Trump in the manner, as you say. But I think maybe we we're due for a little honest, tough talk because we have Harvard trained people professional politicians that have been in there so long, they are great speakers. They can spin a tail. They can sound smarter than anybody. They're not doing us that much good, Rick. They're just not. Completely agree. You know, I, I do want to at least, uh, I got to give folks a little bit of a tease. Maybe it'll get them to go read the column. One of my favorite lines or one of my favorite paragraphs in the entire article is actually the second one. Will America go from Trump to Trump? I, I love that. <laughs> Can America shift gears in a manner which, uh, obvious, which obvious contrast would be politically and socially earth shattering? Yes, it can, especially since the fair and patient American constituency is approaching its political breaking point. I'm not talking about the vast numbers of the uninformed class that unfortunately occupy 51 percent of our electorate. Careful, Romney got in trouble for saying that, sir. Actually, he said 47 and got nailed. Or right. the, the non-voter class. I'm referring to the informed average American who is, in my opinion, who, in my opinion, comprise the genuine collective genius of the of this of our unique country. That is the segment of the potential voters that Donald Trump has roused. Mr. Trump hasn't prompted the silent majority to speak as much as he has awakened an even larger sleeping majority from their coma. Hear, hear, sir. Well, <laughs> well, I, I, I truly believe that. Um, you know, everybody talks about polarization. I, I, I get, you know, the media drives me crazy, Rick. People talk about polarization and bipartisanship constantly. Okay, I would just like to go on the record as I did in my book, Commoner Sense. I don't want anything to do with bipartisanship. I don't agree with anything the progressives, Democrats, or liberals pursue. You can call them whatever you want. It's all the same truckload of manure. I don't care what name you put on it. It's awful. I want nothing to do with it. Somebody like Trump throwing down a clear line can help to separate us from that and bring up that sleeping majority in the form of votes. We've been told for years, just run a nice guy. Run McCain. Run Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney is very qualified to be president. Okay. Really nice, nice guy. I love the guy, but he didn't win. And I'm sorry, but we might be at a point in our political history, and America's been through this before, Rick. This isn't unique. We're nice guys constantly finish last. And if Donald Trump is the one to break this cycle, not the perfect conservative, not the perfect orator, okay, I will live with it, even if it's, it's just him that, that plows the way and then maybe a Cruz or a Walker uh, ends up in there. I, I intentionally leave Bush out of the mix because, as I mentioned to you before, to see myself pulling the lever for Bush in a voting booth, booth is like, that's like a reoccurring nightmare. I, I, I really don't want to do it, even though we have to vote the Republicans in to vote against Hillary because, as I always say, a vote against Hillary is a vote against fascism. Even if it's Trump, possibly Bush, I hope not, but whoever the Republican nominee is, we have got to break this cycle we're in because in the big overarching uh, uh, political um, uh, history that we've had since the beginning of the century, this is now starting to repeat some of the things that were going on in the early 1900s, and that ended up with Wilson and all kinds of other stuff, and we are headed for big, big trouble, Rick. No, I completely agree, and I agree with everything that you just said. As a matter of fact, the only – well – the only thing I would add is not just Bush. If it winds up coming down to me, they're having to pull the lever for Bush or for Krispy Kreme. I think my head might literally explode. Oh my gosh! I mean, I'm I'm not, I'm, I'm not kidding. It, I, I will do it. I will do it. But I'm I'm gonna go in there and I'm just gonna you know when you 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 like sign up and they they make sure that you are who you say you are. I'm just gonna hand whoever's running the voting thing a little squeegee and some cleaner because they're gonna need it. But I'm still gonna go in there and pull the lever. <laughs> There may be a mess afterwards, but I will do what I have to do to try to keep the country on track, even if it means 
They may need the squeegee if, even if my head doesn't explode, I might become violently ill. There's a toss-up between one of those two things occurring. I'm just well, saying. I don't know if anybody is going to be standing in the booth having to pull the leather, lever for either Trump or Bush. But if it is Trump, um, as I mentioned in the article, um, he's... He doesn't really need, you know, everybody's saying it's a clown attempting to ascend to the presidency, as I said in the article. Um, no, we are the other people running, uh, running against are educated, but there's a difference, and I do make this point in commoner sense, because I really do think that the, the wealth, this genius knowledge, the, co- the, 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 the collective knowledge of America lies in the average working person. And as I say in the book, if you need legal help, yes, you go find a lawyer. If you need medical assistance, yes, you're very glad to have that educated person in, in, in front of you in the form of a professional doctor. I understand all that. I don't want to be us and them. I see them as, as average working people too, to a degree. But what I'm saying is that just regular people that vote and are affected by this stuff, you know, a rich liberal can ride fascism out. A rich uh, 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 conservative can ride fascism out, but the ordinary working person cannot, and it's very important to us. So if Trump can get in there and just shake things up, it might not be a perfect shakeup, but it might be a, a, a break in this cycle of progressivism that is eventually going to turn into socialism, communism, because that's how it goes. It goes democracy, socialism, progressivism, communism. It's just a, 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 a track that you get on. You can't get off. Um, you know, Europe has two forms of government, um, socialism and a worse form of socialism. In America, we still have choices. And we, as Reagan said, we need to have those bright colors, that those, those bold lines, bold colors that, 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 that um, uh, distinguish us from that form of European socialism and, and that type of government. It, it doesn't work. We don't want it. And if this breaks the cycle, I'll take it. it I mean, who w- would someone make the argument to me to say that Donald Trump will be a much worse president than Barack Obama? Well, no. I mean, that's one of the things I was uh, going to comment about a second ago when everybody talks about how Trump is basically a clown trying to ascend to the presidency. Um, didn't we already have that happen for the last seven Sorry. years? <laughs> I'm just saying. Sorry, I, I, I lost you there. I, I In the article, I say he's not a clown. He's the ringmaster. Well, yeah, but that's... Okay, what... he's running the show right now, and we'll see how this goes. There might be a point when he doesn't want to be a part of it, he doesn't think he's going to win, and he leaves. And I bet you that Donald Trump, if he did win, okay, and they tallied up all the money that was spent at the end of this campaign, I bet you the guy that spent the actual last uh, least cash on becoming president out of everybody that's running would be Donald Trump. Yeah, no, and and don't misunderstand because one of the when I when I was talking about if it comes down to it being a toss up as to whether my head was going to explode or I was going to vomit, it wasn't Trump. I mean, if it comes down to it, I'll pull the lever for Trump, and not hesitate only because of the fact that I think he would basically shake things up. The two that would be my complete, I would do it if I absolutely had to do it, would be either Bush or Christie. Um, now, as far as Trump being a clown, what I was saying when we lost connection is, didn't haven't we already had someone who basically wound up being somebody's clownist into the presidency? Uh, case in point, our current president. Um, I mean, he's I, a, uh, can you still hear me, Rick? Yeah, I've got you. Okay, he he, uh, he is a um, he's an insane clown. Um, uh, in oh, my no. opinion, Mr. Obama has gone from malignant narcissism over into some kind of area that almost verges on criminal insanity. His comments yesterday equating the support of the Republican Party and the Ayatollahs in, in Iran was completely out of line. He said uh, um, that we... Um, um, uh, line up with them as far as our the, the, the viewpoints go, when really he's the one that is uh, reflects the wishes of Iran. He, he, he's the one that um, uh, shares common uh, ground with them, not the Republicans and not the American people. It, it, it's Obama. 
Awesome. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I no, I, I, I see exactly where you're coming from with that. I just have one thought, though. If he's an insane clown, does that make all the crazy people that follow him his posse? <laughs> exactly. Okay? <laughs> it's scary. 51% of the electorate, the people that actually vote, buy what he's selling. And if you go out and look around the street every day and just assume that 51% of those people are buying what he is selling, I think it's rather frightening. And Hillary Clinton is just going to sell more of it and even in a bigger way. Yeah, pretty much exactly. All right, so at this point, we are about out of time. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell folks where they can find you, let them know where they can find your book, um, also where they can read your columns, all that fun stuff, and then it's about time for us to get out of here so I can make room for Red Nation Rising coming up next. Okay, thanks, Rick. Anyhow, the, the title of the book, of course, is Commoner Sense, The Working Person's Guide to America, and you can get that on uh, Amazon Books, of course. Uh, very easy to get. You can get an ebook download or a paperback um, sent to you in very, very short order. And on Twitter, you can follow me at Fornari Sense. That's F O R N A R I Sense. And um, also, if you want, you can look at my uh, other articles that I put on commonersense.net, which is my blog. And uh, they are of a similar tone as the articles that I write for Magic City Morning Star, um, but they are um, different topics usually. And, of course, you can just go to magiccitynews.com um, um, and pull up the front page and um, my articles. Uh, just put my name in, Patrick Fenari, and 10 articles will come up at Magic City Morning Star online newspaper that I write for quite frequently. Yeah, I've noticed you've got quite a few columns in there. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this particular episode of America Off the Rails. Big thank you to Mr. Patrick Fernari for sitting in with me today as our very special guest. Uh, actually, we'll have you back again next week, if memory serves. Yes, right. yes, I'd, uh, I'd be more than happy to be on. The, the uh, debate will take place tonight, and I'm really looking forward to talking with you about what happens just in the next few hours here, Rick. All right. Well, yeah, we'll come back next week, and we'll actually probably talk more about the debate that's about to happen. Now, coming up next, of course, is Red Nation Rising Radio, so don't you go anywhere for the fastest-growing social, social media movement that has now made its way to radio. You will hear uh, Jared Day and Lou as they uh, bring the truth to the airwaves, and they'll be right here with us here in just a couple minutes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get out of here, folks. It's been a great night. Sorry if I'm talking over some sound effects, but I can't hear them right now. We'll be back with you tomorrow. Game over, man. It's game over. The Internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. And then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on washing and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-513-6154. That's 1-800-513-6154. Again, 1-800-513-6154. Call now. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra.